there, John here at Microasis. Welcome to Microasis Workshop once again. And to the uh, second in the series of the Percy build. Today, I am going to show you how to complete our fuselage frame. Now, any of you who have built Microasis aircraft before, um, this frame is a lot more sophisticated than the uh, the rest of uh, the rest of the microisis range of kits at the moment um, uh, and the reason for that is the uh, the fuselage of this aircraft is going to be using the new material um, that we've uh, we've started to use uh, which is uh, which is tyvek and the tyvek needs a much uh, or is, it's not as rigid as the the one millimeter um, material that we were using the one millimeter foam um, so it needs more support underneath so the the best thing to do that is this uh, this two millimeter vector board um, all laser cut and it all slots together uh, nicely and we glue it all together and, uh, and hey presto we have our uh, fuselage frame so um, without further ado let's get down onto the uh, the build board and I can show you the parts that we require for this particular build. Now let's just let's just get rid of me for a second. You don't want to see my ugly mug. There we go. Gone. Ah, back again. <laughs> Gone. Woo. Sorry. Oh well. It's, it's all about having fun, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, so anyway, what we've got here, I've cut all of these out um, off the uh, off the, the, the vector board sheets. Um, this area of parts here, um, this is all off uh, sheet two, I think. We've got uh, three parts here that are off uh, sheet one. Um, we've got some of the plastic material here and here, and then there's a tiny little sort of mushroom shaped part there. Um, that hopefully we won't lose during the build. Um, I'll put it somewhere safe, and then won't find it again. Um, yeah, that's that's off the um, the the wing sprue, the wing sheet, I should say. Um, so I'm going to put that to one side now, and we'll um, we'll clear the decks of what we don't need at the moment. So the first step is to actually uh, reinforce some of the parts. With the uh, with the plastic, so let's just get rid of all of those bits there. Oh, I can I can come back, can't I? Now that's all cleared away. There we go. Back in shot. <laughs> okay, so um, let's get to move those up to one side as well, and the little mushroom bit put on my laptop so it doesn't escape. Um, okay, so plastic two. Um, these two parts here, or four parts, I should say. Um, you can probably see how these go about reinforcing these um, sort of central spars that act as well. They 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 form part of the the wing that sits between the fuselage and the uh, the engine nacelles. So essentially, these go and strengthen these parts here. Um, I think V1, V2, and P1, P2 for the plastics. So that on there and that on there. But before we glue them, we need to do some folding because these plastic parts support on three sides of the. Uh, of the uh, the area the um the vector board the two mil vector board so we've got some um some score lines in here that have been put in by the laser and you just basically want to fold those down so that they wrap themselves around the uh the vector board parts or essentially the vector board part can slot into the uh, structure once we've created it. Now, if these score lines aren't folding particularly well, 
there's a little trick that you can do. Um, that's not really a trick. Essentially, all you do is you take your knife and you just gently run it down the scores. Obviously, not going all the way through, because that would ruin the effect. And you can just just digs in a little bit further to the material, makes it easier to fold. So these are kind of on the borderline. This this cut, and obviously we try and when we manufacture the kit, try and get it. Uh, as, uh, as good as possible but it's not always the case and it's very difficult to check every one as it comes off the lathe because it, uh, it's quite a time consuming process um, to actually create these kits so well that worked well that uh, actually we're just running lightly down those score lines um, actually made this a lot easier to uh, to fold than uh, than the first one so anyway so that's b2 p1 um so how i orient the uh the, the parts you, you don't actually have to do this because obviously they're symmetrical but i like the, the there's a number scored or the part number is scored onto the part itself and i'll point that forward so th this is this is uh, I'm imagining this now, but the uh, the fuselage. There's the nose. There's the tail. Tail. <laughs> Finger goes out of shot. So I'm just going to dry run this just to make sure everything fits into place. So the uh, B1 bulkhead slots or V2. This was a V2 little bulkhead slots through, and then those uh, those arms sit in there, and the plastic gives it an, uh, a great deal of rigidity, um, a lot of structural integrity. Um, so the idea now is obviously we want to uh, to glue that in place. Let's just uh, get that off. Now you will notice at the ends of these spars you've got this recessed area here um, now that's actually for a bit of uh, reinforcement for the join between the two wing parts um, and in fact a couple of pieces of ply um, go into that slot so when we put this on here and we want to make sure that there's a gap in there that we can push our uh, our, our um, linking part um, into so anyway um, with regards to glue, I'm actually going to apply the glue to the uh, the foam and just use that as reference as to where the, the glue should really go. I don't want to get too much glue outside of the area that it's needed. So I'm just going to... Add the glue, flip it over, add the glue to the other side. There we go. Bring that across there. And I'm going to, because you see the, the part on one side is not symmetrical, it covers, uh, covers a little higher up on the, uh, the bulkhead. So there we go. And I'll just run a little bit. On the bottom there, not too much. It's all about weight, as I often bang on about. <laughs> so now let's just pop the part on. Go in, it goes into the slot. A little bit of excess squidging up and out be expected and then obviously making sure we leave our, our little gap there now I'll press all this together initially but I'm not expecting the plastic to stay put 
but at least we'll have um, glue in the uh, in the right areas. And what I'll do is, once that glue has got a bit more bite, um, as many of you will know, you who you who acts as a, a contact adhesive as well. So once it's dry, push the uh, push the parts together, and they will uh, they'll stick. So pop that to one side. On to the next part. So that's going to go on like so. Once again, we have these little gaps at the end where our plywood joiners go in. So let's just add the necessary. Right to the end, flip over to the other side. And a little bit down there on this side. Go. our plastic piece into place. Just removing the glue off my fingers. Oh, didn't follow my own rules there. That's the front. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Thing all you want to do when you get to this stage is just make sure that those those folds that you put into the plastic are uh, are square. So, okay, well let's uh, let that dry and we'll um, we'll come back and start the whole build of the fuselage. Okay, so let's press the plastic foam now. And you could actually you could put a book on top of it or something similar just to get the whole thing pressed down and um, the uh, the plastic offers a, uh, a great deal of strength to uh, to this area. Very similar to putting in. Uh, uh, carbon fiber rod or something like that but the great thing about the plastics is that it can be um, uh, it can be laser cut to uh, to, to form um, over the uh, the shape that you've created for the aircraft so it can be it's more accommodating I'd say um, than than using um, carbon fiber everywhere although obviously this this kit does use carbon fiber so there we go. Okay, now let's bring on the one of the sides of the aircraft. Um, so how these fit in? Let's get our first one up. So they actually slot into these pieces in the fuselage, and then pop out the other side. You can probably see that little slot there that will actually take one of the formers the ribs um, so that's basically how it uh, how it sits in the fuselage you should see that this should be pretty much flush with the the bottom edge of this uh, fuselage side um, and uh, and go from so literally it's just a process of gluing these in place now I'm going to put glue on here rather than um sorry i'm going to put glue on the the uh the bolt head rather than on this part here because when i push that through I may pick up glue and then pull glue all over um uh, this spar um which i don't want to do 
so I'm just going to add a little bit to where it makes contact with the side of the fuselage. Now this is this is quite different uh, than well, it, the structure is quite similar to how traditional model aircraft, certainly flying model aircraft, are built. Um, but the method we use to put it together is different. Um, normally, you jig something like this um, as you uh, as you glue, so that uh, it would all be true, and uh, as the glue set. It would all be um, all lined up and perfect, uh, whereas using this material and using uh, the, the the glue and the method, um, we don't actually have to uh, we don't have to jig this at all. You literally uh, build it, and it's a, for, uh, at some point you'll look at it and think, "Oh my God, this is never going to be straight." But as you add the parts. It um, it all lines up. <clears throat> it all trues up, and uh, you're left with uh, a good fuselage frame to add the uh, the covering skin to. So part on. And then we move down our parts list. So next we've got V6. That fits in there. And you notice there are, uh, <coughs> excuse me, little notches at the top as well as slots at the bottom of the side of the fuselage where these sit so that you know that you've uh, got it uh, vertically correct as well as uh, as in position so once again we'll just add to the contact points and just a little where it slots And the reason that I have this rule of having the uh, um, the part number where the part number is etched facing forward is simply because when laser cuts something, the focus of the laser is on the uh, surface of the uh, of the material. So as it goes through the material, the uh, the laser loses energy. And the energy spreads out so that you get, um, uh, if you flip over anything that you've cut, especially things like foam, which cut so easily, you flip them over, the, um, the cut usually removes more material the further it goes through the, through the material. And, uh, and that means you get a, um, sort of a slight angle to the uh, to the cut and because fuselages tend to taper if i put the uh, the forward face facing forward um i use that taper to my advantage on the uh, on the material itself um, and that's the reason i do it if you get it around the wrong way it doesn't really matter the glue usually fills in the gaps but um but obviously when we're thinking about when we're thinking about it logically and thinking about trying to reduce the amount of glue that we're using just from a, a weight point of view um it just makes sense uh, and these are all you know, these are all little percentages that go towards the overall result of the uh, of the build and uh, more of the percentages you can get in your favor the uh better the aircraft will fly in theory obviously depends who's at the controls so i'm 
you can you can see as I said we nothing gets uh, nothing gets taped or pinned down everything is very wibbly wobbly at the moment but I promise you it all comes together in the end so you can if you want do the uh, the nose section um, first um, you could I mean I, I do this one side at a time but I mean because of the flexibility you could actually sort of start at the nose and work back doing you know one both sides at the same time um, I've never tried that I've always done it this way so so that's how I'm going to show you but I'm not saying that it's either the best way or the right way it's just one of the ways to do it As you can see, it's quite a, a rapid process too. please feel free to dry fit all these parts i'm relatively confident relatively confident that they will fit um but it's always worth checking <laughs> and um and the other reason that we don't um pin everything down and try and get it as true as we can as we go is the fact that the the glue the yuhu pour is a little bit flexible so although these are not probably sitting at the right angle at the moment um to be part of a a um a fuselage all in all in uh, perfect symmetry um once we start adding the parts that um, bring everything together um, symmetrically, um, we can just allow the glue to dry. At uh, I mean, you can see there probably it's 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 way off, and in fact, you know, I can I can bend that like a banana, um, but it doesn't matter. So, well, whilst uh, whilst those parts are drying off, um, we'll uh, we'll go to the nose section, um, and in the nose section, we'll start experiencing parts coming together um, that actually start introducing some symmetry to the uh, to the aircraft, like uh, this particular part here, which is V V five, I think. Looks like it hasn't scored particularly well, but um that's uh, obviously this this is the uh, the area we actually sit the electronics and you've got two cert holes there for uh, for servos to uh, to sit in um and there should be a little scored patch there that shows you where the uh, the electronics can sit certainly the electronics supplied with the uh, with the aircraft if you've taken that option anyway Let's just fix this in. Now, obviously, as it's going to be a vital part of the aircraft, we're going to make sure it has enough glue to uh, to sit firmly in place. So you've got things like the servos that really do need to be kept uh, from from flexing any during their operation. Make 
go. I think uh, that's covered everything. I've also done this side as well. I didn't have to. <laughs> I shouldn't have done really, thinking about it. But uh, I got carried away. So what I'm going to do is just, just using my finger, take off some of that yuhu. I'm not taking it all off, it doesn't matter if there's some left on there because it's going to be stuck down anyway. I just don't want it to uh, um, to grab uh, in the wrong place. Some of my uh, previous plastic drifting. Just leave it and let the UV dry enough. Go. So anyway, there's our little platform in place. And then on to now using my little um, taper observation um, in the way that the uh, the laser operates, because I'm now going to the nose and it's tapering the other way. I'm going to flip my part around. So that uh, the the lasered face faces uh, faces rearwards. If you followed my logic, give yourself a pat on the back. Right. What's going there? So we'll also put a little glue. That comes into contact with. Except it's not there, is it? No, it's not, John. It's actually up here. There we go. So I'm going to leave the uh, the yuhu that I accidentally put in the wrong place because this sits on the upper. Part just there, like so. And then our last piece, and this is the cavity that the the bat the main part of the battery will sit in. Um, it goes in there. So let's just get our glue in place. Side here. Good. Now, what you should find once this is in place is that that part should come up flush with the uh, the nose area there on the side here that should all sit neatly together um, pretty much flush as you can see this area now is is being trued up by the uh, the shape of these uh, these cross parts Cross fuselage parts. Okay. Now, um, the other thing we can do um, before we uh, put the other side on is actually put our floor in um, that sits just that position there under there. Now, it's definitely worth a dry fit, just to make sure it all lines up and everything fits into place. As you can see, this 
this is probably one of the main parts that trues everything up. Because of this, the vector board is all nice and collapsible. You can push and pull it around so that, um, that it all sits into place nicely. There we go. So right, I'm happy with that. Now this is quite a large piece to uh, to pop on. So what I'm going to do is just basically pack it in the areas that it needs to uh, to um, be solid or to to form a structural part so I'm literally just sort of in the, the corners there where it slots into the side corner there into the corner there and this slotted area here in the corner and there. Let's keep going. It's a big bit, isn't it? That's it. Let's just pop that into place. And because I've used uh, blobs of Yuhu um, rather than smears, it takes a little bit longer for the uh, the Yuhu to dry, um, which means it's not as grabby. Um, as it could be if it was allowed to uh, to dry, which gives us a bit of time to just get everything in place, slide it all around, make sure everything's fitting tightly and neatly. And we don't have to start pulling things apart or splashing around the, um, the lighter fluid to release everything. So, What I am going to do here, though, at the front, is I'm going to actually add a little extra glue where it comes into contact with the uh, central bulkhead, just along there, just along there. So we definitely need some strength there. Go. and then it's just about working your way up and down just making sure everything is sitting where it should everything that's coming into contact with each other and has got glue on it is in place Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, now before that other side goes on, we have a little hinge uh, to add, and it's actually the the rudder hinge, or part of the uh, the, the rudder hinge. Um, and this actually folds and glues together like so then the hinge has actually been scored there and there either side um, and uh, and we can loosen that up by just manipulating it but what we'll do first is glue that together but this area here with these little ellipses cut out um, we don't want to tack those together but we just want to tack the first part of this hinge together. So I'm just 
Schlagen, ne? Und wer das. Moment. So, bring those two together. And then just let that fall apart, 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 apart. <laughs> and let that dry. And we use the contact adhesive properties of UV um, to, to finalize that. So, whilst that's drying, you just run through once again, just checking. All our glue is doing the work that it's supposed to. Okay, we've got a little bit of gapping at the front there. So we just bring that together. The glue's nice and tacky now. So, uh, yeah. There we are. Very good stuff. think is where it should be you see it's quite a, when you get to this stage you feel the weight of that you think wow this material there's there is nothing to it it's literally almost air um which is fantastic obviously for for a uh, relatively small scale um flying aircraft so let's bring the uh P3 parts together, making sure those parts there, the top parts of it, are kept apart. Actually, those apart like that. And then this actually goes, and that ellipse provides you with an indicator. Let's show you if I can. So that's that's the orientation we get. So we've got more of the ellipse under. We actually just line it up with obviously the straight edge of the hinge with the end of the uh, the fuselage, um, and the ellipse lines up with the curve of the uh, the hole in uh, the side of the fuselage there. So. We'll just tack that on at that point. See if it goes. So and then I'm going to take it off, let that dry once again. And, uh, and and put it back on with the uh, you who should grab it instantly and, uh, and hold it in place so we don't have to worry about it anymore okay that's dry now so let's just pop it into place there we go So when you turn it over and have a look at, uh, at where it sits, you can see that there is actually a modest overhang of the, uh, the part prior to the, um, the hinge line. And uh, that just provides a, uh, a gap um, between the rudder and the, and the fuselage itself. Um, that allows the uh, the rudder to, to, to flex. So that's what you're looking for when everything uh, everything lines up well. Though I think mine is slight. Well, it's fine. That looks fine. Looks fine to me. That looks fine. We'll go with that. Okay. So now it's all about getting this side onto the fuselage. And uh, obviously, we um, we do best to push these through these holes um, to uh, to kick things off. Um, so let's do that.
because if we didn't do that it would be very difficult if we started at this end and then tried to get the uh, the holes over these two spars here so this is is our definite first step so whilst they are just sitting or it's just sitting on the side like that i will add a little glue just to the bolt heads at the contact points And also a little and that's going to come in contact with that floor pan. And then what we can do because um, this material is so flexible is that we can just do it a bit at a time. I'm, I'm genuinely excited about how all this this material works. Um, I think it's a bit of a game changer for uh, for building or certainly kitting um, model aircraft. But we'll we'll see how that goes. Let's see how that goes. So at the moment, this glue doesn't have a lot of bite to it, so we can manipulate and move stuff around, but it'll soon have enough tackiness to, uh, to stop us doing that. So let's just crack on and uh, get our side tacked down. Uh, once again, I'm going to use a uh, more of a blob than a smear of glue. Which just it's almost like spot welding, and then that blob is going to take a little while to go off, giving us a little while. Put our side into place. Getting rid of the string. The beauty of Yoohoo string. That first bit that we've done already has got a bit of bite to it. So everything seems to be slotting into place. Uh, as you can see, everything is starting to uh, line up. Oh, I've, gone, I've gone quiet again, <laughs> concentrating, and probably run out of things to say.
making sure that this uh, front section here is nice and flush with this uh, this edge. This is where a hatch goes. Let's bring that out. This is where our hatch goes for access into the uh, the controls, battery placement, etc. So, uh, okay. And lastly, we get to do the uh, to do the nose. Let's just. Add our glue. The required areas. And then start slotting everything into place again. As you can imagine, I've, I've built a fair few of these fuselages um, in the prototyping process, and um, it always amazes me that this material all <laughs> lines up in the end. Um, but structure like this, it's, uh, that's what it should look like. Let's just add a little bit of glue to some of these joints that are still dry. Well, there we go. There's another Yoohoo technique, a tick smear, where you apply the glue as a blob and then you use the uh, the tip of the, uh, uh, the Yoohoo glue to smear it down the joint. There we go. I'll no doubt make a video of how to use Yoohoo some point in the future. So how are we doing? Well, I think we're nearly getting there. We've only got a, a few bits uh, to attach now namely these parts here and our mushroom there we go so let's just finish off the uh, the tail here by adding um, some glue to the other side of the hinge Um, and then actually bringing that together onto the fuselage and that should finish that tail area off nicely. I'll just let that fall apart again, let the Yoohoo dry and uh, bring that together in a second. What we'll do is V37 is our finishing nose piece here. Well, it actually it doesn't finish there. There are bits that uh, that sit on top of it but as for this this particular part of the build this is our finishing piece for the for the nose and that just sits into the area created there and then we can start making sure that all of those the the uh, the floor pan or battery pan um, and uh, and up the sides all form together into uh, into that area there as you can see so let's just add glue where it's required I'm going against my own rules again with regards to the tapering edges i've just realized as i mentioned before it's not that important With that. Let's just pop that in 
to the place. Okay, lots of glue, lashings of glue all around. Actually, let the glue dry off a bit and we'll make sure it all tacks together and then on our tail those two parts together and take the rest out I'm going to just use my knife to push against the tab we've just brought into contact with the side um, well done now we've got whilst we're here we might as well finish off the tail we've got this little piece here that sits uh, sits in the tail bring some rigidity and a nice platform for the um, horizontal stabilizer to sit on so we'll just glue that into place that part is v v23 there I'm going to get away with unglued hands here but um, oh, I could use the stab method see that into there take the knife out there we go transfer some glue around once again, we can leave that to dry a bit and then press it all together once the yuku has uh, sweated it out. So we'll do that with the nose piece now, if everything is dried off slightly. Oh, there you go. Uh, I've managed to get yuku all over the fingers now. Just give them a quick rub okay so all sitting together nicely you see <laughs> came adrift good and the tail once again press that all together there's a little slot here um that uh, runs uh, across the center line and this is where our little mushroom sits in just slot in there he said it will almost hmm. maybe I'll give it some encouragement opening up that slot a little bit that should there we go that sits in there it acts as a bit of a, a support material for the uh, the tie back in this area as it's quite a sort of a detailed small area for the uh, for the material to uh, to sit over so it's we use the the one mil because it's relatively light and uh there we go fantastic good so on to the last piece e v the 43 possibly so this actually sits um, into the slots that are available on the two first uh, bulkheads or with the nose I should say and then there's a slot underneath as well you can see just there where it uh, where it sits so we'll just glue that into place 
And we're done. Lesson over. We can sit back and admire our handiwork. Go. Choose my tweezers. Push that on there. And uh, let me just demonstrate whilst we're here. This is one of the uh, the recommended batteries. It's a three hundred milliamp hour E flight uh, battery. And that, the idea is that it sits in, and there's a little slot in that part that we've just put in that should grab it, like so. So that's how the uh, how the battery should be installed um, once, the, uh, once the aircraft is complete and you're wanting to fly it. So, there we go. <laughs> Getting it out is a problem. Come on, there you go. There we go. Obviously, it'll have a lead on it that you can tug on and break. Uh, right, there we go. Our little fuselage frame complete. I'm sure I've forgotten something, but we can always cover it in the next video, can't we? And talking of covering, I think probably that's what we'll be doing in the next video. So, uh, that all sounds good. So I've now got two. There we go. So I am actually building both at the same time in this video. I'm doing uh, one first in preparation for shooting the video. So I can just make sure that I'm uh, making some sort of sense. And uh, so hopefully by the end of the, yeah, the video will have will have two fully built Percy aircraft. Um, great. Well, how long did that take? Coming up to fifty eight minutes. Fantastic. Um, hope you enjoy uh, building the Percy. It's a very different uh, a very different kit when compared to um, our our range uh, as it stands at the moment. Um, of the micro aces kits um, but i think probably um unusual um as it stands as a as a kit um whoever's made it um so uh, hopefully it's uh, it's enjoyable you can see it coming together nice and quickly and uh, it's going to be something that you'll uh, carry on enjoying i will see you in the next episode um, but for now thank you very much for watching Bye-bye.